Veterans Day just a week away. We continue to honor our veterans through our series celebrating our heroes. Yeah, the story tonight is about a hero who finally is home where he belongs, a hero whose name was honored for years at the Indianapolis 500. Wish TV's Dan Klein shows us the return of his body brings closure to a family after more than a half century of questions. We sent a beautiful, ambitious young man over to Vietnam, and this is what we got back. It's only a so box and a flag, but for Joel Bardock, it's his most cherished possession, though he's only had it for four weeks. You see, that flag was the first definitive sign of his brother in 51 years. Army First Lieutenant Alan Bardock. He was a great big brother. If Alan was here now, what would you tell him? <laughs> I think I just said it. A half century, still not enough to dim the emotions. Alan was the oldest, Joel the youngest. Joel fought with his other brothers, never Alan. Alan was always positive, full of charisma, a sharp dresser, the best salesman in the family's jewelry business. When he went to Purdue, he sold apples and did laundry to make money. He was a little entrepreneur way ahead of his time. He was a hustler. Lieutenant Bardock went to Vietnam at the end of 1967 as part of the 507th Transportation Group. For Christmas, he and his siblings gave their mother this photograph. Just two weeks later, he died with 45 others in a helicopter crash on January 8, 1968, monsoon season in Vietnam. To this day, it's still the fourth deadliest chopper crash ever. For months, he was listed as missing. That changed on June 8th when Joel was 17. He and his sister were watching Robert Kennedy's funeral when Allen's roommate at Purdue came to the house, a house which still stands in Westfield near 161st and Oak Road. His mother finally came home, but didn't have a chance to put down her handbag before being told Allen was dead. He was 24 years old. It's like getting hit across the chest with a baseball bat. And it's something that you never forget, and it's something you sure don't want anybody else to have to listen to. For decades, the Bardock family was connected with the tight fraternity at the Speedway. Allen's uncle designed this ring given each year to the winning driver. The idea of IMS President Wilbur Shaw, Tony Holman, and Allen's dad. Five diamonds on the glittering flagpole, one for each 100 miles. The family business gave the ring each year from 46 to 82. Just one ring handed out per year. They all wear that ring whenever they're around racing day. They have that ring on. For about a decade after Allen's death, his father gave out a humanitarian award in Allen's name to someone making a difference in the racing community. Joel says his brother never missed a 500. It was one of the things he absolutely lived for, absolutely. But it's not Memorial Day weekend, which is the toughest time for Joel. And it's not Allen's birthday on June 26th or even the date of his death on January 8th. It's the holidays, celebrating as a family yet missing an important piece. Siblings who began together in life, not getting the chance to finish together. Once there's an empty chair, that chair is always empty. I don't care who else may try to sit there, but that chair, that chair is always empty. Fast forward to 2019. This time, another phone call, finally with news. Genetic testing of this hip fragment and finger from more bones turned over in 1988 was a match, leading to this special moment last month. A flag-draped casket, a short ceremony at the Indianapolis airport. Joel's tears, not the only ones that day, as Alan came home to Indiana for the first time in 51 years. We were all trying to hang on for dear life. Oh, it matters immensely, and honestly, I didn't realize that, and how much, until I got the phone call saying that they had found him. Alan was finally laid to rest in Hoosier soil on October 5th. A Huey helicopter even flying over. And there again is that flag, Joel's most cherished possession. Personally, I have gotten 100% closure. I, uh, I couldn't be any more at peace with this. Getting peace and answers to questions that have been asked for more than five decades. Finally coming together in just the last couple months. My heart goes out to people that still don't have their answers. I can tell you that there's hope. Allen's burial plot is just grass for now. A headstone is due this week. It sits at the top of the hill in Crown Hill Cemetery's Field of Valor, just a few steps away from the eternal flame. 
But as darkness falls on a November evening, it's the view that means so much to Joel. It's not the eagle, the American flag, or even the Palmyra one. It's the mausoleum behind it. That's where Alan's parents are buried. If you believe in the spirits, they get to talk every day, all day. Conversations a half century in the making. For Joel, Alan's return, even if it's just a box and a flag, better than nothing. If this is how we have to take that, then I accept it. But still, he would do anything for one more chance to speak. What would I say to him? Good. Human remains were recovered from the crash site in Vietnam, but 